Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. Hello and welcome to My Hometown. I'm Bill Horan, along with my co-host, recent Nassau Community College graduate, Gina Holstead. Hey, Mr. Bill. Did you know that I also graduated from Albert High School? And when I was there, I was a member of the Spoken Word Poetry Club. I did not realize you're a poet. I have a, a lot of hidden talents, Mr. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> and I'm happy to tell you that the club is still going on and is quite impressive. It's a space where students, regardless of race, religion, gender identity, or economic background, can come together and express themselves creatively, freely, and emotionally through the use of words. Let's learn more by welcoming Jacinta Bowman, a teacher and librarian at Malvern High School and the advisor of the Spoken Word Poetry Club, along with some of her students, Nirvana Cole, Luciana Valerio, Uche Alozi, and Tatiana Forbes-Smith. Jacinta and everyone, welcome to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHBC. Jacinta, let's start with you. Can you tell us more how the Spoken Word Poetry Club came about and what it does? Sure. I started the Spoken Word Poetry Club um, when I became the, the, the librarian at, Ma- at Malvern High School, and that was in 2022. So this is the second year that it's going. Right. So yours, um, Regina, yours was beforehand that hadn't been in operation since then. So we started up started up again because I really wanted a space for the students to be able to um, to talk about their feelings and express themselves. And um, it was just a good way to get them to start moving again. Um, and one thing that I wanted to do was have a magazine. So that's kind of how it started, a, a magazine with their, with their poems. And then from there, that's when we started this Book and Word Poetry Club again. Did that take off immediately, or was it students kind of reticent about joining a poetry club? Actually, we had quite a few students that were really excited about it, and um, one student who graduated last year, um, he's the one that took the bull by the horns and said, we're going to do this, and he went in to, to the principal and said, we have to have this club, and, that, and he got over 50 signatures to start the club. That's impressive. Yes. And if I remember correctly, poetry was only done under the Black uh, Studies Club, right? Because I remember um, I was president at the time when I went to Malvern. They had once a year, like yearly, where um, students would showcase their poems, but it wasn't really considered the poetry club. It was just under a different club. So it's good that um, that's a club that's now in fruition and it actually exists because we had a lot of poets in Malvern. Right. There, there are. Some of them are shy. Um, but we're getting them up. Ms. Bowman, let's give a shout out to that person because he really started something up. And you mentioned that he was the kind of the go-getter. Can, we, can you tell us his name? His name was Nalan Guntalicki. That's a tough one. Let's okay. spell it. But <laughs> No, good for him. No, and, and he deserves a shout out. And Gina, you, never, you were president? Oh, yes, my Black Studies Club. Yes, I. that's why I, I got um, c- confused because I always considered that club like the Poetry Club, but it wasn't really that. It was the Black Studies Club. Yes, I was person of that club. You really time. have a secret life. You know, I'm probably <laughs> going to find out like you were a spy in the meantime and you did things for I the can, government. It'll always CIA. be a secret, though. It'll okay, oh, it's going to be a secret. Okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> yeah, so how did you guys' journey begin as a poet? I want to start with Nirvana. Oh, um, so for me, uh, growing up, Um, My dad, he's very into poetry Uh, and, you know, um, he would always come up with his own poetry. He would have like romance poetry, mostly romance, but um, and he would always make my brother and my sister and I recite it um, over and over again until he felt like he got it right. And um, it made me really love poetry and really understand the power behind words. And, you know, that's what really inspired me when it came to poetry. Um, But not just that, um, even with my dad being the main factor Um, a lot of people wouldn't expect this from me but I really love listening to Eminem's music and I find that his rap uh, his rapping is very poetic and that has recently inspired me to join the poetry club to do spoken word and to write poetry you know very truthful and very raw you know I poetry love, I love that because there's a very big correlation between music and poetry yeah. and I think that's how a lot of p- conscious people I would say like J. Cole or Kendrick Lamar and Eminem being one of those prime examples how they start as poets and then kind of shift make that shift into music because music is literally just poet um, poetry with instrumentals behind it mm-hmm. um, what about you uh, Luciano how did you uh, begin your journey as a poet 
I started poetry because I wanted to write songs. I know that's right. And I love music, and I love that when you listen closely, like, it can make you feel. It can dig up those emotions from within you and really make you feel. And so that's why I started writing poetry, because I wanted to make music, too. You know, as you're talking about this, too, you can see how happy on your face. We love to see people who, no matter what they do in the world, the, the jobs, teaching, police, that they really love what they're doing every day because we're going to be doing it for most of our life. And I can see, just as you're talking about poetry, you're beaming over here. You're like that little kid who just got the Christmas presents or the ice cream store, etc. So this is something you really like. Oh, yes. It, it definitely is. Okay. And, and, and Bill, just you saying that, that's why I wanted to have this club, because I wanted to have this reaction come out. So, yay. It's important. And you guys, um, Nirvana, you talked about how your dad was a big influence, especially in your early beginnings as a poet. Um, my next question is, what like poets specifically or pieces of literature have had the most significant influence in your work? Um, so, I'm a very avid reader, and um, I really love my favorite po my my favorite poet. My favorite uh, author is actually Ray Bradbury, and um, he his book Fahrenheit 451 uh, had gotten me into reading. Um, and I just love all like the metaphors and the similes and just everything about that book. Like I rave about it to everybody, and even though it's not poetry in its general sense. I feel like the poetic aspect of how he wrote, I would say that, you know, that is like my favorite like form of like poetry, I guess, just like metaphorical writing. But um, if we're going to talk about literal poems, I would say um, James Baldwin's Paradise. Um, I like memorize the entire thing. That would definitely be like my favorite poem. Though. That's a really good one. Yeah. What, what about you, Luciana? Uh, well, I don't really have a favorite poet because I read like little snippets from like everyone. But someone who writes like poetically, I'd say Mariah Carey. Okay. We Belong Together her. is a is a ballad. So oh, I'm yes. with you on that one. <laughs> now, what, what inspires you as you're going through the day? Do you just see something, a flower or a puppy or a kitten or something that might not even... Most of us might not even think of as poetic, a car engine or a shovel or something. And does that get your mind thinking in poetic terms? Not really. What gets me thinking is those moments of like silence when you're just alone with your thoughts and you're thinking something and like all of a sudden that thought like, ooh, I can I can put a little twist on that and ooh, I can make this sound like this and it's just it just flows. Now, I'm going to ask you a secret, and hopefully you won't get in trouble with any of your teachers. Do you sometimes sit through math class and say, uh, gee, I don't really like the math too much, but I'm getting an idea for a poem, so I'll start writing it? I sit through math class and do a lot of things, no, and math okay. is not one of them. Okay, we'll <laughs> leave it at that, so we don't want to get you in trouble. And it, We're not just picking on math. I used to be a math teacher, but it could be any maybe chemistry or history, something you, you might not have as strong an interest in as you do in the poetry, so... Uh, that you get your inspiration from there. How about you? Um, for me, I 100% agree with Luciana. For me, at least not during school. Um, I, I'm i pretty focused during school, although I daydream a lot outside of it. Um, and like Luciana said, during those times of silence, like the best poetry, actually if any of the poetry that I wrote, I... Uh, I wrote it like at 3 a.m. in the morning. I would like suddenly wake up and I would just like go to my phone. And I would start writing whatever I was feeling, whatever dream I had. Like I, I have very vivid dreams. So like, um, yeah. So like during those times of silence, like early in the morning or very late at night, that's when I tend to get the best inspiration for my poetry. Now, if I can ask a question, jump in, Gina, on your time. Uh, like, do you take out your phone and, and start taping it? If you think of something at 3 a.m., at 3 a.m., I'm sleeping. So if, if you get an idea, do you take out the phone or do you jot it down or do you tape it or do something to remember it? Um, I don't tape it. I feel like I, I, I just tend to like just type it down like on notes and stuff like that. Um, I never really thought about taping it. That's actually really interesting. I do that more when it comes to like when I think of like song lyrics. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I just start writing on my notes. Just what I feel. I'm learning so much about poetry. This is, these are things I never knew about. And here I am sleeping and you're writing poetry. I'm wasting those <laughs> good hours at 3 a.m. So 
I want to piggyback off of what you said because you just said that um, uh, 3 a.m. is like the kind of, you know, specific time that you kind of find that your best work comes about. Uh, does it do you find it that it influences like the tone or the mood of your poetry? And is it like a preference or does it normally happen? Do you prefer to um, write like in the early morning as opposed to like middle of the day or um, late at night? Um, that's really great. <laughs> this is a great series of questions. Um, I don't feel uh, like the best times for me, I feel like is very early in the morning or very late at night, um, which they're around the same time. Um, but I don't feel like it affects the mood. I think it's um, a lot of actually a lot of po- a lot of poems of mine are very uh, I feel like are very truthful and raw, just like those deeper feelings that um, I feel like maybe maybe I don't always focus on those deeper feelings and I feel like during those times um, like early in the morning late at night like I can really think about those things and really be able to translate them into words and I feel like those times bring out the truth in me if anything and I don't feel like it really brings out like any sort of mood when it comes to like specific genres but I feel like just truth in general Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I want to remind you, listeners, that you are listening to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Gina Halstead here with Bill Horan. And today we are learning about the Spoken Word Poetry Club at Malvern High School. Our guest includes Ms. Jacinta Bowman, a teacher and librarian at Malvern High School and the advisor to the club, along with some of her students, Nirvana Cole, Luciana Valerio, Uchi Alozi, and Tatiana Forbes-Smith. Now, Luciana, I want to follow up and ask you the same question. Do you uh, prefer a certain time of day to create poetry? And do you find it uh, influencing your tone or mood of your poetry in terms of it being, you know, happy as opposed to very gloomy or things of that nature? I like to write right before my head hits the pillow because at night, like, you have those moments of solitude. You're getting ready to go to sleep. And I feel like when I'm by myself, is when I can truly, like, be, like, raw, like, truthful, and draw out those emotions that I don't really think about during the day when my head's in the clouds, so. You find it to be very, more transparent in that sense. Okay, understood. Now, Gina, I have to squeeze in a question here. Luciana, when you get that idea in the middle of the night, do you call up Ms. Bowman and call and say, I got an idea, and she says, go to sleep? (laughs) <laughs> no, I I make sure I'm very s- discreet. I'm supposed to be sleeping. No one knows about my secret time. <laughs> okay. And Miss Bowman should have her own time, and probably 3 a.m. is is not when she wants to be teaching or doing something from, uh, that would be called on the job, so to speak. <laughs> I think that's only fair. Now, Miss Bowman, are you put in the position, do you have to criticize these poems or critique them and say, I think you should do this a little differently or that? No, I let them run with what they feel. Um, they'll ask me their their opinions some uh, for, for my opinion sometimes, and I'll say, okay, maybe this sounds good here, or you might want to try this or add to that. Um, but for the most part, they just write what they want, and it comes out beautifully. It sounds like it, uh, and they obviously really enjoy what they're doing, although it's at odd times of the day. <laughs> but they, so long as you enjoy it and, and you're beaming about it, that, that's really the best part. So, yeah. And you don't get criticized. So you can, now, can they publish this? Is there a school a booklet or a paper or a publication? We have started something called The Magic of Malvern Magazine. We still have not had our first, our first one published yet. We're looking for funds. <laughs> to um to to publish it and we're going to start working on the second one so because we are positive that it will come about and it's such a wonderful magazine we have not just poetry but we have artwork by students also and it it's just a beautiful work well this might be a good application now for it because people are listening to the show so if there's any really rich people out there or creative people or poets or if you want to just do something good for the educational system we have uh, you can be part of. It's called The Magic of Malvern. Yes. And I'm sure you'd put uh, somebody's name in a book and say thanks to the donation of. So uh, Absolutely. you'd get some credit. Or if there's a business on Long Island or doctor's office or law firm, accountants, I'm trying to get you money from someplace. And we'll take so, it. Uh, well, that's good. That's good. See, that you need the business person there. That's, that's what you have to have for every operation. It's important to invest in the youth. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, do... 
uh, poets, like business people, get together and they'll have an idea and say, let's establish this business. Well, let's do this, uh, uh, a restaurant by the beach and someone else will want it in the mountains, etc. Do poets get together and share ideas or kick things around back and forth? Or is it more of an in- individual um, operation? Well, to speak to that, um, Ma- Malvern High School is having their, their Blacks, Black History Month celebration. And our uh, some of the ladies from our group are putting together a c- collaborative play. So take that from there and tell them how you're doing it. Um, so I, yeah, so uh, I thought that it would be a really great idea and inspired by, um, I really love a lot of the poems that they publish, I think it's called Button Poetry. Um, they have it like on TikTok and uh, YouTube. But uh, from one of um, from one of the videos, it was a duo. It was a duo of um, uh, a female and a male, and they were talking about like their differences and basically talking about like the biases that they face. And uh, from that, I was really inspired by that and I thought the girls would love to do a piece similar to that where we all talk about you know the biases that we face um, because we're all of different backgrounds different ethnicities and stuff like that and I thought for the black history celebration that we could just do a collaborative piece in that sense and talking about that and hopefully it can reach other students um, out there who may understand how we feel and may understand the biases and you know the overall thing of it was just to talk about how, you know, we're not going to let these biases define who we are. So, yeah. And that's very important. Yeah. Uh, do you express uh, your, maybe not poetry as such, but do you do other writing, short stories or plays for the school, etc.? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was the answer of yes. <laughs> with, yes. with much thought. <laughs> um. Like, you know those little websites where you can, like, publish your own little stories? Like, sometimes I'll be writing something. Wattpad? No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I was like... Our chip of our own. <laughs> <you know? laughs> We've evolved from then. Yes, we have. And, like, as I said earlier, like, writing little songs here and there. So you... you it's poetry we're talking about today because of the Poetry Club. But you write songs, short stories, things like that. You express yourself and, and you're creative in many different venues. I love literature. I can see that. <laughs> Gina? I think we should we should let them uh, perform their poems. Yeah. It'll oh, be we, a perfect we, song. We're learning so much about you, so we're going to start. Okay. So um, I have a poem uh, that I've written called A Letter to a Sweet Girl I Once Knew. Dear Sweet Girl... How have you been? To be honest, I don't know how else to start this letter. I don't know where to begin. But you see, on my way to school this morning, I saw a sweet little girl who looked just like you. She was so adorable and cute. She skipped down the sidewalk with her head held high. Her smile was so bright and her eyes were full of hope and laughter. She reminded me so much of you. Oh, but how little she knew that in the blink of an eye, chaos could rapidly ensue. And if I could write her a letter, I would warn her that things could be so much better. I would say, dear sweet girl... Don't dare let life turn you bitter or let it hinder you from dreaming any bigger. Being taller doesn't mean your world needs to be smaller. You don't need to dim that bright light of yours when the world demands it to be darker. You are worth so much more than what they say you are. Please never lose that spark. You were born a star and most of all, I'm sorry to break it to you kid, normal doesn't exist. So you can cross that off of your Christmas wish list. And dear sweet girl that I once knew, when I saw you, saw you on my walk to school, I later wondered where your parents were, you lost your home too but I hope you keep holding your head high please never lose that pride and never ever let them see you cry dream big and never let a single dream be deferred you can be whatever you want in this whole entire world and when you grow up I hope that childhood laughter of yours never fades away I hope you never have to write a letter to your younger self in hopes that things will get better someday warning her of all the mistakes she was destined to make but please please don't be afraid I want you to know that everything will be okay because at the end of the day like your favorite author would say like your favorite author Ray Bradbury would say you live and get hurt it's an unavoidable dogma on this God-ridden earth see I too am still finding my home now guided by the sweet girl I once was the funny thing is I still believe she's there you see that child like wonder doesn't just disappear I hear her in every word I write on paper in every poem she speaks the truth she reminds me of that innocence we often find to fade after youth so dear sweet girl 
When life gets colder and you start to feel the weight of life on your shoulders, remember you are not alone. We will one day find that home, a place we can stay now and forever, a place we can call our own. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> yes, let's applaud. That was beautiful. I feel like it was a, a letter to self, but like younger self. Yeah, um, that's exactly perfect. perfect. I got <laughs> yeah. it. I got it. The mission accomplished. The <laughs> the the moral of the poem was well received. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Gina, before we get the next poem, I think you have something to Yes, I want to remind listeners that you are listening to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC. My name is Gina Halstead here with Bill Haran, and today we are learning about the spoken word poetry club at Malvern High School. Our guests include Miss Jacinta Bowman, a teacher in life librarian at Malvern High School and the advisor to the club along with some of her students Nirvana Cole, Luciana Valerio, excuse me, Uchi Alozi and Tatiana Forbes Smith. Now, Luciana, you have a poem as well that you would like to share with us? Um, I wrote something called Somewhere Between Now and Then. Somewhere between now and then my world fell asleep. Warm home cooked meals became cold and I didn't know why until I realized they were coming from the freezer. Somewhere between now and then, the yellow brick road disappeared, and the rainbow faded into the gray sky. Somewhere between now and then, blissful ignorance was replaced by a rude awakening. The difference between fantasy and reality couldn't have been more distinct. Somewhere between now and then, the word love slipped my vocabulary as the people in my life slipped my mind. Selflessness and abundance was replaced with my selfish ego. But everyone must wake up somehow. Somewhere between now and then, I started to feel the love again, and the words, I love you, mom, slipped my tongue. Somewhere between now and then, the sun and the moon danced once again, and I started saying hello. Somewhere between now and then, I woke up. (laughs) This is so impressive. I I really can't get over that you're coming out with this. How many, do do you write or try to write a poem a week or a month or a year, or how often do you just knock these poems out? I don't, I don't number myself. I'll just knock one out whenever I can. Because, like, one thing about me, I like quality over quantity. Mm-hmm. So. Hey, you so guys, are you sure you're in high school? <laughs> <laughs> She's ninth grade. Wow. <laughs> are you really ninth grade? I'm just a little baby, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and Amanda, what, what grade are you in? Oh, um, I am in 12th grade. You are? Yeah. What are your plans for the future? Um, so I plan on majoring in biomed, um, hopefully uh, to become a PA in geriatrics. So, yeah. You really have everything planned. Yeah. I, I love planning. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah. Okay. No, <laughs> and where are you going to use the poetry, though, in there? You're too good just to kind of pass it by to yeah. go for medicine. Yeah. Actually, I, I never... I don't... I. I really hope I never lose that side of me. I really love literature, and um, it's been so amazing being able to be president of uh, this club and being able to help and, like, teach other girls, like, to love poetry just as much as I do and other people in the club. It's just mostly girls for now. <laughs> but um, but I actually plan on um, hopefully making my own club in the college that I go to, making a poetry club, um, so I can, you know, spread the love of poetry more then. But, um, you know, uh, if this tends to um, come into fruition, I do hope to become a literature teacher at some point um, after being a PA. you got a busy life coming up. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) No free time there. Now, as a senior, do you act as a mentor to the younger students? Um, I I try to be. I think for the most part I've accomplished that. (laughs) partially but uh yeah yeah like but i i love it though and luciana she's great i I mean she and it's and it's really surprising because you know she's kind of become like my best friend um because we both have the same interests when it comes to singing and when it comes to poetry but um i really love teaching and i really love you know working with other people who feel so strongly about poetry just as much as I I do. thought freshman was supposed to carry your books. Uh, you, <laughs> she can be your best friend? Y- yeah, she can carry my books, too, though. Oh, she can uh, carry yeah, your books, yeah. too. Okay. <laughs> carry my books. <laughs> and hasn't, do you get to... Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm kind of blown away by this poetry. Do you get to see these virtually every day from... I don't know how many... I think you said 30 or 40 people are in the club? Oh, no. <laughs> We have about 13 people in the 13. club. Right. Um, and I'm blown away by them every every time we have a meeting. We meet on Fridays after school, and Nirvana always has something set up where, okay, let's write about this, and then we share. 
and I sometimes write too. It's not nearly as good as what they have, uh-huh. but they come through and I just sit there and wonder, wow, where do these kids get this? And they just have such phenomenal ideas and you heard them just now. Yeah. Yeah. So, but she makes sure that every time that we meet, there is something f- for her to teach them and for them to learn and to try to accomplish during that time. Now, are there any, and I may be using the wrong terms, but contests, tournaments, um, competitions among poets, or uh, it, whether just to expose them to other schools or uh, to see who was who going to be rated the best, if, if, if there is such a thing? Well, we haven't done anything um, with other schools yet. I have been looking up things like that, but what we do have at Malvern High School is our annual Poetry Slam. And last year, Nirvana was the number one winner, and her six-and-a-half-minute poem was so phenomenal that we had to pass tissues around because it was just so deep and moving that people were crying. It was really wonderful. Gina, I think we better get autographs before the show's <laughs> you over. Should. Today, you know, you really Where's should. Where's the paper and pen? You get the, I got the pen. You got the, we'll use the backside of the scripts here that we're working on. And we'll, we'll take the time now to invite you to this year's April 15th Poetry Slam. And uh, please come out and join us and see how we do. Is someone going to do a poem on taxes? Because April 15th, you know, it's got to be that. That would, that would be the perfect lead in. That'll get you in Newsday. That'll get you in everything. So, <laughs> Well, and this has been terrific. I really, I, I can't tell you how impressed I am. And I, can I ask, what is your future plans, Louisiana? I want to be a singer. You do? Okay. Nothing wrong with that. And, uh, you'll have a manager here who's uh, your your uh, mentor and uh, best friend, right? Oh, yes. We'll do it all <laughs> together. This has been terrific. And really, I, I'm certainly impressed. I think Gina, is. she's been at the school, so she knows more about this than I do. But uh, you have a very impressive group. Unfortunately, our time goes much too quickly. So I want to thank Miss Jacinta Bowman, who's a teacher and librarian at Malvern High School. She's advisor to the Spoken Word Poetry Club. And the students, Nirvana Cole, Luciana Valerio, Uche Alozi, and Tatiana Forbes-Smith. Forbes Smith, I'm sorry. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Ms. Bowman, thank you for bringing these wonderful students to WHPC. Yeah, thank you for, for having, having us. us. <laughs> I'm Bill Horan. I'm here with Gina Holstead, a recent graduate of Nassau Community College and Melbourne High School. We want to thank you for listening to this week's episode of My Hometown. We'd like to get your feedback on My Hometown. Send your comments to whpc at ncc.edu. Nassau Community College, where success starts and continues. Till next time, this is Bill St. James. And remember, there's no town like your hometown.